Hi everyone, welcome to the Diva for Random video tutorials. This is Kara, and um, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create your own material uh, for use with the Diva toolbar. Um, and for this and a series of following tutorials, we're actually going to use a new model called uh, D4R-Classroom. And you can download this model from um, a new page on our website called uh, example models that's uh, under tips and tricks uh, in our user guide uh, or from the uh, page on our website where this video tutorial is shown. Um, and what we have here is a three-story uh, building and each story is a classroom um, and we have uh, desks, a uh, teacher, and a whiteboard here. And you can see there's a light shelf system here on either side of the wall, a Claire story uh, glazing. Um, and you can see here on the west facade, the windows are all aligned. And on the south facade, uh, I've changed the fenestration uh, on each floor. One other thing I will point out is this red um, uh, geometry here. This is a diagrammatic lighting layout uh, that we're going to use in a later tutorial. So that's stored on e-light layout and you can just turn that off for now. We're not going to use that um, during this tutorial. So um, we basically are going to be uh, creating our own material for the whiteboard. Um, and then testing it out using the visualization metric. So uh, as you would do with any um, any uh, metric that you wanted to run, you're going to have to start by uh, clicking the first few buttons on the toolbar. So click location. I'm going to select Boston. And then I'm going to click on the nodes button. And I'm going to select the floor geometry here and press enter. I'm going to accept the default of 2.5 feet off of the floor and I'm going to change the default or I'm going to use uh, a different number. I'm going to use 2 feet on center. And then we have our nodes. We're not actually going to be using those right now but um, they'll be helpful later on. Um, next we're going to click on our materials button and click assign materials. Now um, hopefully uh, this shows up just like this in your um, on your computer. I have previously assigned uh, materials to uh, several of the layers uh, at using the default materials uh, or the standard materials that come with the Diva material library. So uh, as long as you haven't deleted those um, materials, they should show up here and uh, be already assigned to uh, the geometry. A couple of these uh, um, layers we don't need to assign anything to at the moment. You can just leave them as is. But the uh, the one thing we do want to look at is actually the whiteboard layer. Now this is a, uh, The whiteboard is what we're going to use to um, test out our uh, material creation. Um, so the first thing we want to do is actually click on that and set it to let's say a high reflectance ceiling and 90 percent reflectance. Um, and that's just a diffuse uh, you know sort of matte um, uh, finish and uh, we'll click submit materials. So the next thing we want to do is to set our view. So I'm going to switch to shaded view and I'm just going to zoom in until I can get a good view of the uh, whiteboard. I'll change the lens length just to give us a slightly broader view. Maybe zoom in a little bit more. Um, this part is not particularly critical. Uh, as long as you can see the whiteboard that's enough for this exercise at the moment. So now we'll go ahead and click on the metrics button and as I mentioned we're going to be using the visualization metric or uh, image based metric to um, test out uh, our material changes. I'm going to leave everything as the default um, but I'm going to click medium quality um, because it's an interior rendering and um, this tends to be a little bit better for uh, interiors. And I'm going to click uh, run simulation. I'll pause the narration while it's running. Okay, so here we have our um, image. And you can see the whiteboard um, has a white 
uh, matte reflectance uh, or matte matte material 90% um, reflectance uh, applied to it and and that's good that's what we wanted um, but now we are going to go in and change this uh, since whiteboards frequently have a little bit of a sheen to them a shine we're going to go in and um, create a material that has um, a shine to it I'm going to save this image so we can compare it later um, I'm just going to save as a PNG click save and close that for now so what I want you to do is go to um, your um, directory, your computer directory, click on your C drive and go to your Diva folder. So that's C Diva. And the reason we're here is actually because there's a, a series of files that uh, Diva um, has in the background that enable it to run and um, we are going to uh, work with uh, one of those files um, that contains all the materials and we're going to edit that so that a uh, new material shows up. So go ahead and double click on the daylight folder and you'll see that there's a file here called material. It's called a rad file but a rad file can be opened with text pad. So we can open uh, the material file by clicking on text pad and you'll see that at the top it says Radiance Material Library and that's because Radiance is uh, the main engine that runs behind Diva and so we're using Radiance Material Definitions. Um, you'll notice that several lines have a number sign in front of them. That uh, it means that it's a comment or basically something that the computer program can ignore. It's uh, mostly for reference for people reading or editing the file. Uh, below you'll see this this uh, part here is the actual definition of the of one material in this case the generic ceiling uh, uh, eighty percent reflectance um, the guts of this are we have four lines of comment again which uh, you could in theory write whatever you wanted in here because uh, these are again ignored by the program and then four lines of uh, very important text uh, which uh, have certain conventions attached to them um, that we need to um, pay attention to. Um, in terms of this file you can see that we have a series of opaque materials first, then a set of glazings, some electric chromic glazings, and then some other materials down below. So for now we are going to just be working with an opaque material. Again we want to edit that whiteboard material to uh, something else. So what I'm going to do is actually just copy the 90% reflectance material definition and scroll down to the bottom of the opaque material section and paste it. Um, so uh, now we can uh, begin to edit our um, our new material and the way we actually make it a new material is just by renaming it. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to leave it the same 90% reflectance but I'm going to call it shiny white board here. There are no particular naming conventions you have to pay attention to but make sure that there are no spaces in your name here. Um, the next few lines are uh, just describe the material. Um, there's a comment that says this is a purely diffuse reflector with a standard ceiling reflectivity of 90%. We can change this because ours is no longer a purely diffuse reflector. We can say it's going to be a slightly um, specular reflector with a uh, reflectivity of 90%. Uh, Christoph Reinhardt originally wrote this uh, material definition, um, but if you would like, you can uh, add your name here. Um, and that is about it for the, the comment section, where, uh, again, that's mostly for our reference. Now we get into the important section, these next four lines. And here it's much more important to pay attention to the order uh, in which you write things and how you write them. So on the first line we have actually three terms that are separated by a space. We have a uh, void, which uh, we're going to leave as void for now. Plastic, which defines the material uh, for radiance that we're using. And although 
you know, your material may not be plastic, it might be plaster or some other material. Plastic is a sort of a, a catch-all name for um, these types of materials. And the next thing we want to do is copy our reference name up here and put it down here because this is actually where the name shows up. Um, so make sure that you uh, that you put a new name in here otherwise you will just be using the same 90% reflectance um, as above. The next two lines uh, are just uh, have zeros at the front of them, we can leave those alone, and then the last line has uh, the number 5 and then 5 terms that uh, follow it. So it has a 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, and then a 0 and a 0. And uh, this 5 just tells us how many terms will follow it. So for instance, if we scroll down to the glazings, there's a 3 here. That means there are 3 terms that will follow uh, that first number. And um, in our case, the uh, these refer to the red, green, uh, blue uh, color values. And then the last two uh, values here uh, refer to specularity and roughness. So in case you want to know more information about this, go to uh, our webpage, divaferino.com and go ahead under Advanced Diva Ferrino Concepts and see where it says Custom Radiance Materials, click on that. Um, and there are several uh, links here to some good uh, references, um, but uh, the one I want to look to is the first one. So click on that and this will actually uh, explain to you the uh, different types of materials that you can use as well as the terms that follow them. So for instance, if we go down to plastic, um, again, the modifier we have is set to void. Plastic is the name of the material type, and then ID is our, uh, our name, which we have as a shiny whiteboard. The zero, zero should look familiar, as should the five. And then you can see after that we have red, green, blue. Those are the color values that we want to assign to our, um, our plastic, and specularity and roughness. So we'll go ahead and minimize that. And keep in mind that the R, G, and B values are simply um, the, uh, the, this decimal value is simply your R value um, divided by 255. So that is, you know, if you have an R value of 127 or 100 or 200, um, to get the value that goes here, just divide by um, the maximum. Uh, which is 255. So uh, I'm happy with the 0.9 uh, white color um, that we had from before. What I really want to do is simply change uh, the term that we have for specularity, which is the fourth term here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make it 0. Point, uh, let's say 0.25. Um, and so it's a little bit higher than uh, the suggested value for plastic but um, I think that's okay in this case. So go ahead and um, save your file and close your material file and go back to uh, your Rhino window and we're going to click on materials again and this time down here at whiteboard we are going to go in and look for our material and lo and behold there it is shiny whiteboard 90% reflectance we're going to click on that and click Submit Material Information. So we have successfully changed our material, um, but we'd like to see some evidence of that. So let's go ahead and run our metrics again. And again, I'll pause while it's running. Okay, and here uh, we have our finished uh, image. And you can see we now have um, a specular surface here for the whiteboard, a shiny surface. And um, so we've successfully uh, changed our, um, or added a new material to our library. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Um, and I'm going to look and see. What, so this was where we started with our mat. And this is where we are now with our shiny whiteboard. 
So I hope that helps uh, explain how to go ahead and modify your own materials in uh, Diva. And I look forward to uh, seeing you in the next tutorial. Thanks.